So in the last video, I mentioned that we were going to learn a different way to kind of structure the code, and it would result in the same thing happening. So if I take out this part, I just made it into a comment. So the computer actually doesn't read that. It's just for notes, pretty much. But it can also take out parts of your code that you don't want to run for a while, or for whatever reason. Um, so if I do that and I save, what I'll notice is if I go back here, I pretty much have the same thing that was happening before, even though I changed a bunch of code. So I'll point out some of those things that this video had me change. Um, before, I had my variables listed out like this. Except I had like variable player. I mean, I think I had it dot. I mean, underscore x equals whatever I had the enemy value at 150. Okay. And I had a list of all these variables. And I had each one of them was declared. But what I've done now is I've kind of put them in groups. Um, and these groups are called objects in programming languages. So here I've created an object called enemy. And how I know it's an object is because when I put my equal sign here, I put brackets after it. That tells the computer that you're going to have a group of variables, an object, after it. So I put all of my same variables. But now I don't need to put enemy in front of it. And just call it x or speed x. So that makes it a little bit less to type. It also makes it so it matches up with any other player or enemy that I create. So here I've got x again and x again for the player. So they're all the same name for the variable. And what that lets us do is when we come down to kind of the functional part of the code, this would be like setting up all of your values and your numbers and names. But down here is where we're actually going to do the function of this. I don't actually need this. That was just random that was in the video and I forgot to delete it. But really what's going to happen here is we're going to come down to this code. And none of these functions run right away. It just kind of skips over them. And I go down to my set interval. And since that's not part of a function, this is the actual next part of the code that's going to run. And what it does is it calls or references, points out this update function. And it's going to run every 40 milliseconds, or 25, 150 times a second, or 25 times a second, I think. Okay, right. so that calls update. You see how it highlights up here. and what I did is now I'm going to just call update entity, which is this function up here. And before, this code looked like it was doubled. Every object that I had floating around on my screen, I had to have that same chunk of code. This one was going to be for player. This one was going to be for enemy. If I made a third enemy, I would have to copy my code again. And that gets very, very long and not easy to update because you have to update it in multiple places. You have to change things in multiple places if there's an issue. So what this does is it actually says what you're going to do is update the entity by what I'm putting in here. I'm going to update my enemy. So that tells the computer that every time it sees object, it's going to update the enemy using the enemy's numbers right up here. And then once it's done putting the new place for the enemy, it's going to update the player. So instead of using my enemy's numbers, it's going to always look at these numbers here, which are different. It's a different letter. It's a different name, I guess they called it, a different speed, different starting place, all sorts of stuff. Okay. What I did, this wasn't actually in the video, but it was driving me nuts. If I take this out of the code, I can show you the difference here. If I take that one thing out of the code by making it a comment, 
what that does is it cleared my canvas. It made it blank every time I updated. So here we go. If I refresh this, that's why it was like having a trail of peas, and that was just annoying me. So I googled how how to clear a canvas, and it showed me this clear rectangle property. So I used it, and now if I get rid of that, I will see that it's not going to be just a jumbled mess of letters. It's going to clear it every single time and only show the most current location of the enemy one or enemy two. And if I show enemy two in there, all I did there is I created another object called enemy two. I gave it different numbers, whatever I felt like, called it E2 instead. And then I had to add an update entity two to my code. So now that that's in there, this is going to actually throw in a third thing that floats around the screen. You'll notice that the E2 is much slower than any of the others because my speeds are 5 or 10 compared to 15, 20 on the first enemy or 30 and 5 on the player. So that's why that one's moving slower. It looks like it's moving slower. Now, this still isn't the best way or most efficient way to do this code. We're getting there. Uh, what they mentioned on the video was the next one is we're going to use a list or other languages call them arrays. It's pretty much just a table or a place to store a bunch of information. Um, what that lets you do is instead of creating a new player, a new enemy, by literally copying and pasting, like this is how I would make a third one, a different name, change some of these numbers. Change that to E3. But changing that kind of gives me a new object, but I haven't used the object yet. So in order to have it show up on the screen, I would have to copy in enemy three, save this, and then refresh. And I should see a fourth object floating around now. Yep. So there's enemy three, the one that I just made. So that, if you have a lot of enemies or players or anything like that, this still isn't super efficient because every new one you have to make, you have to create a new line in the code. So that doesn't let the game be flexible, like when an enemy dies, if it's a game where they can die, you would have to have like that code disappear. You'd have to have a way to delete that in the literal code. Like I would have to come here and delete this line and refresh it, and that's just not possible. So there's a way where we can actually store all these information, the names of the enemies or the players, and then cycle through them. And I would assume that they're going to do that with a loop. So that's something we haven't seen yet. We've seen like if functions. We've seen creating variables. We've seen making functions that have what are called parameters, meaning I can put in a name here, like enemy or player or enemy two, enemy three. That becomes my parameter that gets smushed or passed to this function. Okay, so we're starting to get a little bit more sophisticated code. Um, it's going to get even more sophisticated when we have these lists come in or arrays. But right now we're kind of still working on the graphics of the game. Haven't really had these players interact with each other, these objects interact with each other. I would assume at some point we're going to have them collide with each other and do things, but I don't know, we'll see where we go from here.